This message has, has this message has been in my heart for a couple of weeks, um, and I believe is placed there for this particular season. It's in John four thirty five through thirty eight. If you want to turn with me there, or you want to watch on the screen, John four verses thirty five through thirty eight. Do you not say there are yet four months? Then comes the harvest. Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that sower and reaper may rejoice together. For here the saying holds true, one sows and another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored and you have entered into their labor. Let's pray. Father, we commit ourselves to your word, to the worship of of learning to know you better, to understanding you. Open our hearts and open our minds that we may receive your word. Over the next few moments, let us, to, let us be responsive. Lord, may my words be birthed of your spirit and not of my flesh. May your spirit begin to illuminate the truth of your word. In your holy name we pray, amen. Before we fully dive into this passage, let me set the context of what's going on. Jesus here is speaking to his disciples following his encounter with the Samaritan woman at the well. You may know of that story. 
I'm sure most of you remember he asks her for a drink and then proceeds to tell her if she knew the gift he had to offer, she would be asking him for a drink of what? Living water. He goes on to tell her details about her life that she should or that he shouldn't have known, which she so famously responds with, I perceive that you are a prophet. Ultimately, this exchange ends with her revelation of the man that she's speaking with to be the Messiah. Then it says that she ran to the village and told the people. Make a mental note on that part. Then in verses 31 through 34, the disciples begin to urge Jesus to eat. Where Jesus shares this notable statement. He says, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to accomplish his work. Now we've set up the context in which Jesus is speaking to his disciples in this morning's passage. Beginning in verse 35. Do you not say there are yet four months, then comes the harvest? Look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. Jesus chooses to use the symbolism of planting and harvesting to demonstrate something important here. But first, he has to get us thinking spiritually and not naturally. Here's what I mean. Many of you likely have more planting and harvesting knowledge than myself. But I do know enough to know this, that there are set seasons and time periods for planting and harvesting. For example, I'm not going to go to my house today and plant strawberries and by December 1 go harvest beautiful strawberries, correct? Unless I'm completely wrong about what season we're in. But there are seasons for planting and there are time periods, durations for harvesting. There's a necessary season and span of time. But here, Jesus is saying to them, look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. In the natural, seeds need to be planted. Time needs to pass. And what do we do while that happens? We wait. Jesus is saying to them, lift up your eyes. Stop waiting for the harvest. The harvest is ready. Look around you. Don't you normally have to wait, he says? Don't you normally have to wait a period of time? But he's saying, don't don't wait. There's not a waiting period now. The season that we're in, the harvest is ready. So the disciples in the town of Sychar in Samaria... With, it says in, the, in the, the verses leading up to this that based on her, the, the Samaritan woman going into the town, that there are Samaritans coming to him. So here they would have been with Jesus, Samaritans coming their way, coming the way of Jesus. And then Jesus alludes to this question. This is what he's saying. If you were to wrap these ideas into a question, he says, are you going to reap the harvest that's in front of you Or are you going to be concerned with eating lunch? Are you concerned with the natural physical needs, encouraging me to eat lunch? Or are you going to be aware of the spiritual harvest that is in front of you? Where have we heard something similar to this? Matthew 6, 31, he says, Therefore do not be anxious, saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we eat? drink or what shall we wear for the Gentiles seek after these things and your heavenly father knows that you need them but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you lift up your eyes lift up your eyes look around seek the kingdom don't worry about what you will eat seek the kingdom first look up the harvest is in front of you as he was telling him, telling them, the fields are ready for harvest. That's the message for us today. The fields are ready for harvest. How do we know? How do we know that souls are ready for harvesting? I'm glad you asked that question. The rest of this passage lays that out for us. 
Let's skip down to verses 37 and 38 where Jesus distinguishes between two types of people involved with this process. Verse 37, for here the saying holds true, one sows, another reaps. I sent you to reap that for which you did not labor. Others have labored, and you have entered into their labor. The two type of people being identified here are sowers and reapers. Typically in our world of farming, the sower and the reaper are the same person, are they not? You sowed the seed, you reaped the harvest. How many of you would like to spend the time it takes to plant a field of corn, only to wake up one day, two or three months later, walk out, and all the corn is gone? Someone came in and harvested all of your corn that was ready after you sowed the seed. It was your seed in the ground. You put in the work to cultivate the land. You should reap the harvest, right? But Jesus is demonstrating in kingdom work, the harvesting of souls, that's not how it works. One sows, another reaps. And there are three observations I want us to consider as we may wrestle with the possibility of being frustrated with the time and and effort spent in sowing, not getting to benefit the reward of reaping. Number one is this. To remember, we are on the receiving end. Right now, in this period of time and life that we are in, we are on the receiving end of harvesting seeds that we didn't labor over. The work that's been done before us, the way that's been paved before us, today we're benefiting from that. We're harvesting seeds we didn't sow. Saints have gone before us, laboring to sow seeds. Number two is this. We don't own the seed. We're the steward of the seed. The word that is of Jesus Christ is the seed, and therefore the final output is His. We don't own the seed that's being sown. The seed is the word that is Jesus Christ. And then the third observation we'll talk about in just one moment. Put a pen in that one. So Jesus is telling his disciples, other people put in labor and did the work. Now you're getting to reap the harvest. Remember I told you to make a mental note of the woman at the well, running back to tell the people of the Messiah what she had just heard, what she had just witnessed. Jesus had sowed the seed of the word with her. She ran back to Samaria, and what did she do? She began sowing the seed of the word. And before Jesus, what did Moses and the prophets do? They sowed the seed through the writings. Brothers and sisters labored before us sharing the seed that is Jesus Christ. And now we are reaping the fruits of their labor. Today, the harvest is ripe for the seeds that have been sown days, months, and years before us. That's how we can be confident that the harvest is ripe. Jesus is demonstrating for us how the process has been working for thousands of years. The work has been being done. The seeds have been being sown thousands of years before us. Specifically, why I believe this particular passage has been on my heart over the past couple of weeks is knowing about this transition, is knowing about uh, us, our discussions about time period and, and those ongoing, that ongoing dialogue. I believe that the Spirit laid this passage on my heart during this time. Because here's the revelation that came to me as, as this passage was, was being contemplated. There's a somewhat underemphasized implication in this text this morning. The emphasis of the passage is on reaping what you didn't sow. He spends most of the passage talking about the disciples getting to reap what they didn't labor over. Others labored before you. 
However, there are two people involved. We talked about the reapers and the emphasis on the reapers. But in this very, and in this very moment, we may be benefiting from seeds sown before us, laborers who went before us. But here's a reality. We're also sowing seeds that someone else will harvest. Through your witness, both verbal and nonverbal, the truth you proclaim and the truth that you live out, we are sowing seeds each and every day. We have the opportunity. Maybe we're not, but we have the opportunity to be sowing the seed that is Jesus Christ. That's how I view what God is entrusting me with. After the first of the year, Pastor Mickey has sown seeds of the word within this church and within this community for decades that you and I both get to harvest. There's the seeds that he's sown before us, and there's seeds he's going to continue to sow because his ministry is just going to continue. I know how he is, and he's not going to stop. The seeds will be continue to be sown, but he's sown seeds that he's not going to get to reap the harvest of. Some of us are going to get to reap the harvest of the labor that's gone before us through his work. He's been getting to do the two, two things. He's been getting to do the easy work of harvesting, and then he's been getting to do the hard work of sowing. Because the easy work of harvesting, people did before him. People sowed the seeds of the message of Jesus Christ before him. And he got to reap the harvest that was there. But in that same time period, he, began, he was sowing seeds of the message of Jesus Christ that the future generations are going to get to reap the harvest of. That's the rhythm of Christian life, harvesting and sowing. Earlier, I mentioned putting a pin in that third observation within this text, about potential frustration of laboring and not getting to reap the harvest. You did all of this work. I sowed all of this seed. Anyone who's been involved in ministry for any period of time, and probably my dad more than anybody, could, could share just the, the, the frustration you could potentially see in the seed that you've been sowing and not getting to see that harvest. So here's a, an observation that's found in this text. And it's found in verse 36. It says, Already the one who reaps is receiving wages and gathering fruit for eternal life, so that the sower and reaper may rejoice together. Both the sower and the reaper will rejoice together. Why? For the souls they've gathered to inherit eternal life. The work that's being done, the work that you may be doing, you may be sowing seed that doesn't, you don't get to see the fruit of that might seem frustrating. But there's going to be a day where you get to rejoice. Both the sower and the reaper together get to rejoice over the lives, over the seeds that were sown and the harvest that was brought in by both the sower and the reaper, going to get to share in that joy. So if we see our efforts through an eternal lens rather than an earthly one, we will see the unifying work between sowers and reapers. We're both part of the same effort, both part of the same work. None of us, listen to this clearly, none of us are leaving behind unfinished work. It reminds me of a, of a, of a quote, a, a concept that I, I stumbled, across, stumbled upon a couple weeks ago from Dallas Willard. And this concept that he has, that he talks about, is, is the abandoning of outcomes to God. Abandoning outcomes to God. And as he talks about it, he talks about the, the reality of when we, when we begin to think that we can control the outcomes of, of ministry, we control the outcomes of sowing seeds, we bear a weight that we were never intended to bear. We can grow weary from this 
weight that we're carrying of controlling the outcomes. We steward what is, what is in front of us. We be faithful to what we have at our hands, and we leave the outcomes unto God. So the unfinished work that we think we're leaving behind, we, all, we, all we are called to do is to be faithful to proclaim, faithful to serve as witness unto Christ and what he's done. And we leave the outcomes unto God. That may mean the next generation reaps the harvest or the following generation after that. But we let the outcomes be God's. Abandon the outcomes to God. So none of us are leaving behind unfinished work. We may just be cultivating. We just may be sowing seeds. In our sowing of the seeds, what are we doing? We're just passing off the baton. Passing off the baton to those who will go after us. Pastor Mickey is passing the baton to me. And someday I will pass the baton on to someone else. Because that's what, the, that's what Christianity has been doing throughout all of human history. Is the baton has continued to, been, to have been handed off. And if it's not, what happens? That particular expression of church, who knows what happens to it? It dies off. It doesn't flourish. There has to be a time where we pass off the baton where ministry is passed off to the, to the next person. And I think for, for my dad in this season, it's taken a lot of generosity, a lot of humility to say, I think this is the season. I think this is the time for me to, to carry this. I, I, don't, I don't mean burden. I don't mean weight in, in a negative way. But the responsibility of, of caring for souls, caring for church, shepherding the people that are in this building, that are going to be part of this community, both the people here and both the people who are going to be added to this community over the years. Pastor Mickey is passing the baton. I often think about it this way and, and talk about it a lot, and, and I pray that God helps me to remain this heart and this posture towards ministry, is that I treat it with an open hand. I treat the lives that are entrusted to me each and every Sunday, each and every week, each and every day with an open hand. The resources that God has entrusted into my care, I, I treat them with an open hand, that as he desires, I will steward them while they are in my hands. But I'm not going to clinch onto those things in an effort to control or hold on to them, but I will steward them as long as he sees fit. And I will allow those things and, and lives and whatever he sees fit to, to pass on or for me to steward. I want to faithfully steward what he's placed in my hands. That's the pursuit. That's the heart. That's my desire. One final note about verse 36. It says that the reaper is already receiving wages. You notice it says that in present tense. Already receiving wages. The wages reference here is most likely eternal. But whether it means here, here, or the future, or both, there is a sense of joy and satisfaction now for doing the will of the Lord. Just as Jesus said previously, my food is to do the will of the Lord. His sustenance and his satisfaction came from doing the will of the Lord. So today, if you were to perform a litmus test, how well are we stewarding the seed? Are we sowing? As Scripture calls us to, Mark 16, 15, it says, go, to all, go into all the world and proclaim the gospel to the, world, to the whole creation. And then in Matthew 28, 19, go and make disciples of all nations. Scripture also calls us to love our neighbor as ourselves, to love your enemy. Are we sowing the light of Jesus Christ? Are we sowing those seed, number one? And the second question is this. Are we reaping? Are we sowing and are we reaping? 
Jesus said, look, I tell you, lift up your eyes and see that the fields are white for harvest. There are laborers who have gone before us, who have paved the way, who've sown the seed, and today the harvest is in front of us. And so we're doing the simultaneous work of reaping the harvest that's in front of us while we're planting seeds. I get the joy and the honor, as we all do, to reap the harvest that has been laid before us. Some by Pastor Mickey. Some by Pastor John Keith decades ago. All by the laborers before us, we're reaping the harvest. And then together, as the family of God, we are sowing the seeds. We're sowing the seeds. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, this morning, I pray that you would reveal to us now the harvest that's in front of us, the lives, the souls that are in front of us this very moment. Help us to lift up our eyes. Help us to to pull our attention off of earthly things, off of the temporal things that are in front of us, the needs that are in front of us. Help us to lift up our eyes, set our minds on things that are above, that we may see the harvest that's in front of us, that we may do spiritual work, that at times we may forgo the natural, forgo the natural need, forget about that. We focus upon your kingdom. We lift up our eyes and see the harvest that's in front of us. In this moment, God, lay those people on our hearts that are both either ripe for the harvest or need the seed sown. Help us to be faithful to doing your work that you've called us to do. Give us your strength. Give us your power. Throughout the week, we pray that your spirit would reveal to us the lives that are in front of us, in front of us that he would help us lift up our eyes and see the spiritual need, see the spiritual harvest, the souls that lie in front of us. Thank you for the work that you've done, Lord. Thank you for the seeds that have been sown before us. Thank you for allowing us to participate in your work of harvesting, that we may get to share in this joy, that we may get to rejoice in eternity, both the sower and the reaper. We get to rejoice over the lives, over the souls that were saved for eternity. Thank you, Lord, for that opportunity. Thank you for allowing us to share in that joy. In your holy name we pray. Amen. Amen. As we close today and leave the building, if if you would, I'd love to chat with you, shake your hand. If you have any questions, thoughts, if you'd like to meet, to have coffee, lunch, uh, anytime soon, let's connect. I'd love to do that. Be blessed as you go throughout the week. Thank you.